Illinois, where the pastor's elder Ricky Dukes.
from anger. Heal, Lord God, from vengeance. Heal from sin, dear God. Heal, Lord God, from infirmity. Heal, God, we ask. Heal, Lord. Do your work. Dear, do your work, God. My God, this world needs to see a movement of the Almighty God. My God, is not what we say that makes the difference. It's what you do, God, that makes the difference. Make a difference, Lord. Make a difference, we ask. Bless, Lord. And my God will give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's pray for Brother Darius Brown. Amen. Our brother's carrying a burden on this afternoon. So let's hold him up before the Lord that the Lord will use him as he preaches the word of God. All right? All right. Okay. Let's hold our brother up. Amen. With a hearty amen. Amen. Good afternoon to the saints and friends of those in social media land. I'm glad to be saved this afternoon. How about you? Glory, I'm saved. Uh, we got something to shout about. I said we got something to shout about. Oh my God, my God. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm saved in times like these. Man, you know, when somebody famous comes in the neighborhood, people get excited. They're like, did you hear? Uh, a couple months ago, this Hollywood celebrity that a lot of women think is very attractive, very handsome. They compare a lot of other men to him. His name is Denzel Washington. He happened to come to town. And folks were just, oh, so excited. He, he on the west side. He on the west side. Just him being in the neighborhood got folks all riled up. When Jesus come in town, saints, what scripture saying? When it was noise that he was in the house. It was noise that he was in the house. When God made his presence known, man, there ought to be some noise. We, we ought to, we ought to And, 
And sometimes you got to contain yourself. Because it all ties into the song we sang, Glory, I'm saved. Some of us want to be saved for a long time. And when you finally get it, you ever had a taste for something and you go buying all this other knockoff stuff and it ain't it? But then when you finally get it, that's what I had a taste for. That's what I've been longing for. That's how salvation is. You don't went here and you don't went there trying to find what gonna fill that void in your life. And when you really get the good stuff, I'm talking about salvation. It's the real kind. When you get true salvation, then you like, hallelujah, glory, I'm saved. My sins all part, my guilt is all gone. And touch that special spot. Matthew 16 and 13, pray for me, please. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, He asked his disciples, saying, I want to know what people are talking about and people are talking today. There's a lot of people saying what Jesus is and who Jesus is, not by their mouth, but the way they live. Some people saying Jesus is a snap. He'll put you in your place. Don't get me. I'm a Christian, but don't touch me the wrong way. They're saying that's Jesus. Some people saying Jesus is in the club. Every Saturday night, they come to the club. They're sitting there in the choir. This is what Jesus is. He said, I want to know what are people saying I am. We please. And they said. Come on. Some say they are John the Baptist. I heard you was John the Baptist. Come so on. Elias. Somebody said you was Elias. And I heard Jeremiah. And then somebody else Elias. said you was Jeremiah. And somebody else just didn't know. They said he probably just won the pot. We please. He said unto them. Uh-huh. But who all right, we know religious people are given a false impression of what Jesus is, but then he brings it home to the saints. He said, who do you say I am? When people look at your life, when they look at my life, what are we saying Jesus is? Read, please. And Simon Peter answered and said, What did he say? Thou art the Christ. Oh, you're the Christ. The son of the you're the anointed one. You're the son of the living God. What did he say? Blessed are thou. Blessed are thou. Sound like Jonah. Sound like Jonah. It's not that you went to the famous seminary and they taught you this. Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. But my Father which is in heaven. But my Father which is in heaven. And I say. And I say. Unto thee. That thou art Peter. You ain't nobody. Peter. You ain't nobody but just Peter. And upon this rock. I'm going to rush back to it. You ain't nobody. You just Peter. Look, all of us, we look all clean and nice and saved and sanctified. God say, y'all ain't nothing. You just, you just Corinthian. You just Jason. You just Terry. You ain't nothing. Listen, don't think you're so holy that without God, you can live like that. Just a short while ago, you was messed up. Just a short while ago, you, you, you was all out there. So don't get holy and get the high head and start looking down on other folks. What a shame, what a shame. But for the grace of God, somebody be shaking their head at you. You ain't nothing but Peter. Yeah, you got the truth, but you ain't nothing but Peter. Read, please. And upon this rock. Upon this truth that you just gave us. It's upon the truth. Listen, Catholic Church, he didn't build the church on Peter. I don't have time, but I'll, I'll tell you. You can go search it out. Actually, I called, I told the other person to read it. First Corinthians 3.11. Let's read this real quick. Let's all you think of that because we're coming back. Brother he, Foundation. He did not build the church on Peter. He built it on the truth that Peter said. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3.11. Brother Foundation can no man or lay. Or other foundation can no man lay. Then that is laid. You yes. can't lay something because it's already there. Jesus is the foundation of the church. Jesus is the rock of truth. Jesus is the foundation. You can't found God's church because he already found it. Right? Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid. Which is Jesus Christ. All right. Now go to 1 Timothy. I'm telling you, he didn't lay it 2 Timothy 2. He did not lay the church on Peter because you will find that Peter backslid at a point. So if he built the church on Peter, that would mean the foundation wasn't that sure. Because Peter backslid. 
For what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 19. You may want to get a little bit of some of these scriptures down. You go Nevertheless, down. the foundation of God Nevertheless, stands sure. Nevertheless, the foundation of God ain't rocking. It, it don't contain no backslider. The foundation of God is sure. Jesus is the foundation for the church. Jesus established the church on the sure foundation. Yes, yes, sir. Now let's get back to the story again. Matthew the 16th chapter. And the other readers, you can get Isaiah the second chapter. So back to Matthew 16. He said, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Who church are you building? I will build my church. I'm going to build my church. Yes. I'm so glad he built it. Yes. Man, I'm glad he built it. Because in man's church, they can put you out. Yes. When they don't make your tithes, they say, you ain't paying no tithes. They can keep you out. You out my church. This is my granddaddy church. This is my mama church. This is my grandma church. We built this church. In man's church, they can kick you out. But in God's church, only sin kicks you out. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church and let me show you how strong my construction is. Read, please. At the gates of hell shall not prevail against The gates of hell, false religion, false forms of worship, other entryways, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Amen. Did he say it won't prevail against them? Against it. You know why he said it, don't you? Y'all know. Because he only got one. Oh, I know it ain't popular. I know people don't want to hear. But Jesus died for one church. And he only has one church. And he's the foundation for one church. And in the midst of all the mess that's going on, in the midst of all the division that's going on, in the midst of the denominationalism that's going on, in the midst of all the rape that's going on, and the drugs, and the sexual harassment, and the gambling, and the partying, and the fussing, and the fighting, and the church going, and the religious wars, in the midst of all of that nuclear war threatening, in the midst of all that, God still got a church. Amen. That's my title this afternoon. God still got a church. Amen. Man, Acts the 20th chapter, the other reader, the other person I said, Isaiah the second chapter. Acts 20. I'm glad that in the midst of all this, people are still seeking somewhere where they can get their soul filled. They're looking for people that live the way the Bible says. They're looking for a church where people ain't sizing you up because of what you got on. Uh, did you see her? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. The church is the hospital. Yes. Yes. People that are sick of sin. Yes. You ought to be able to come to church all messed up. It's a shame when a sick person goes to the hospital and leaves still sick. Yes. You go to the hospital because you want to feel better, don't you? Yes. When you come to church all filthy with right. sin, all sick of sin, I'm tired of gambling. I'm tired of partying. I'm tired of lying. You come to church because you want to be healed. And the church is a hospital. The Bible says, is there no bone in Gilead? Is there no physician there? He's still a healer of broken hearts. He's a healer of broken marriages. He's a healer of emotion. He's a healer of abuse. He's a healer of sex and lies. The church is a hospital. Now listen, there can't be no hospital if it's constantly turning out sick folks. Right. If sinners can't get saved at, at the church, something wrong. Right. Now I may come in sick and all messed up, but heaven help me if I leave out the same way. Something wrong with that hospital. But God got a church that nobody who has come in this church and come in the right way, you do not leave the way you can. I still got a church, people trying to throw rocks at it, people trying to tear it down, people trying to say y'all ain't nothing, people trying to say don't take all that, but in the midst of all that noise, God still got a few folks. Yeah. Isaiah the second chapter, and verse number one. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Come on. And it shall come to pass in the last come to pass when? In the last days. While all the mess is going on, in the last days, God still got a church. It's going to come to pass. Read, please. That the mountain 
of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. In the top of the mountains. God's church ain't down low with false religion. Come on, church. God's church ain't down there with with nominal religion. I'm going to show you in the scripture. In God's church, there's a requirement. Yeah, right. In false religion, you come in, you got, they got a smokers lounge, we can hook up, you like me, I like you, we can meet at the motel, all that, all that you can do in, in false religion, in nominal churches, but God's church is established in the top of the mountain, what did he say? And shall be exalted above the hill. God's church is exalted above nominal religion, this ain't just a church on the corner. Right, brother? Right. The church is a body of believers, but something specific about them, they have been called out. When you search definitions of church, you will find they're starting to remove the call out of you. Right? Now just say about your believers, a Christian group who agree on some theology, all that. They don't want to say called out. But God church is made up of folks who've been called out. We are called out of sin. We are called out of false religion. We are called out of the world. Called out of the old lifestyle. You ain't no saint just because you're going to church. Church don't make you a Christian no more than a garage. Make you a car. Something's got to happen on the inside. There's got to be a work that's done. And when that work is done, you become a part of God's church. You still got church. It's so much going on. I just don't know. Well, listen to the word. In the last days, the church is going to be established in the top of the hill. While the gates of hell, false religion, trying its best to pull us back. Trying to make us blend in. Trying to make us just like everybody else. But God got a church. And God going to prove to you and that he got a church. Read, please. And shall be exalted above the hills. Above the hills. And all nations shall flow unto it. Why does he say exalted above the hills? Because your normal neighborhood church is the hills. Right. They ain't many standards down there. Right. They low. Whoa. Anybody can get in? Yeah. You know, it's like some of them colleges who don't hardly have no people who apply for them. Anybody can get in. Mm-hmm. When you take a school like Harvard, right. then you got to do some conditions. Right. You can't just walk and make it that condition. Our church is way up there. And you got to meet some conditions, which we're going to get to. You got to meet some conditions to be a part of God's church. Acts the 20th chapter and verse number 28 and the other person, Revelation 21 and 9. God still has a church. I haven't heard this happen. I heard my so-and-so did this and I heard my mama did this and this one did that and she did that and they said that. But in the midst of all that, God always has and always will have a church. You mess around in false religion if you want to. God got a church. And when you go somewhere, because the church is the bride of Christ, when you and I go join up with another religious organization besides God's church, which is his bride, when you join up with another religious organization, that is an unlawful relationship. And the Bible calls it fornication. Anytime you join church, because you ain't going to find that in the scriptures. Amen. You'll never find the scriptures where he says, shake somebody heels. Never find where he told us we can choose the church we want to go to. Amen. Choose the congregation you want to be a part of. In Babylon, you can do whatever you want to do. You go wherever you want to go. You worship how you want to worship. But when it comes to the church of God, God said, I'm running this. I set the members in place. I choose who's going to be there, who's going to be there, who's going to sit there. God said, I do that. Got a church? Yeah. Read please. Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto who? To yourself. Saints, listen, in these last evil days, in order to stay a part of God's church, we better take heed to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go looking out the window at what so and so did. We better watch ourselves. Wait a minute. Lord, let me watch my spirit. Let me watch my attitude. Let me watch what I'm looking at. Let me watch where I'm walking. Let me watch how I'm acting. Let me make sure I'm apologizing. Let me make sure I'm still clean. Let me watch my devotional life. Let me watch my obedience. Take heed to yourself. 
We please. And to all the flock. And to all the flock. All of them which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. The Holy Ghost put the leaders in place. Yeah. Right. Two feet. I just don't like that. There is one. All right. So loud. <laughs> I just, some of that, I don't like it. Yeah, take it over the Holy Ghost. That's right. <laughs> I don't like Pastor Deuce. I mean, really. I just, I just don't prefer him. Let's take it up with the Holy Ghost. Right. The Holy Ghost puts the leaders in place in God's church. See, in man's church, they can set you up and set you down. I see the anointing on you, son. I, I want to use you. And then I find out you start getting more influence than me. So after the pastor, then I go back to another son, son, son. I'm going to have to set you down. But this is my church. I ain't going to let nobody take over my church. But in God's church, the Holy Ghost sets up. And takes the, the Holy Ghost that made you oversee is what? All I wish the Holy Ghost that made you oversee is. Come on. That made you oversee is to feed the church of God. To feed the church of God. One thing that establishes God's church away from everybody else. You're going to get fed when you come to God's church. Amen. Uh, you're going to eat when you come to God's church. Now, now you may want to spit some of this stuff out. But the Holy Ghost got a way of putting that food right up inside you. You know, sometimes that bitch don't want to eat. So, so sometimes the mama got to get creative. She makes a little bit of them, them chopped up spinach with something up. And then she gets that baby at first, the baby's face all messed up. And next thing you know, they, they get it down their throat. When you come to the church of God, when you come to God's church, or you may be mad, you may not like it, but there's something about truth. God got a way of getting it down your socket. <laughs> you're going to eat. You're going to be enlightened when you come to God's church. You're not going to leave no dummy. You may not like it, but God will enlighten you. <laughs> and what he does is he fixes up the man of God, the woman of God, to be able to feed the church. We ain't got a sense of ourselves, but God make up the meal. Yes, sir. We the waiters. He say, take this out and serve it up. <laughs> you hand it to the people. People are like, I don't like the way this takes you. You got to take that up with the chef. <laughs> I just remember what he gave me. God said, tell the people, I still got a church. I don't want to hear this. Tell the people, I still got a church. In the midst of all the Because the church cost him his blood. He died for the church of God. I said God still got a church. What is the church of God? It's his, so it's named that. It's the church of God. Not Duke's church. Not Rosenberg church. It's the church of God. That's who it belongs to. Yes, sir. When you can search out, let me show you how you know whether or not you're in God's church. All right. If you're in a congregation where you can go to the internet and look up the history, the foundation of when your particular church or denomination was founded, I can tell you that's not God's church. If some man's name is listed as the founder, that's not God's church. Because we started off showing you other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. God don't need a man to lay the foundation of his church. Jesus did it all. All right, let's move on. Revelation 21 and 9. And the other person, Colossians, the first chapter. And Revelation 21 and 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven, seven angels, vials, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me. And what did he say? Saying, Come on, come hither, come hither. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Yes. Yes. You ever been to a wedding and you see somebody that looked like the bride? They tell you you really shouldn't wear white to weddings. Right. The bride's supposed to stand out. Yes. Every once in a while you have a rebel. <laughs> no, I'm going to wear my white. I, I look good in white. I'm going to wear my white. When it comes to 
come to the church, God styles the church as women because women can reproduce. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Converts, that's reproduction. Yes. And nowadays, people are getting confused on what God's church looks like. They see people with nasty attitudes saying they still say it. They say, oh, oh okay, that's, that's how the saints act. But they see people breaking off from folks, divided from folks, and they look at them and they say, oh, that's, that's, that's God's church. But when he said, hold on, come with me, let me show you something. I want to show you God's church. God's church ain't all split up and sliced up and diced up. God still got a church in the midst of the mess. God still got a church, and I want to show it to you. Revelation 21 and 8, we read Colossians 1 and 13. What does that say? Who has delivered us uh -huh. from the power of darkness? From the power of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Other reader, Psalms 87. Come on. Mm -hmm. Keep reading, Sister Katie. In whom we have redemption. We have redemption. Through his blood. Through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sin. My God. Yes. Jesus forgives our sin. In order to be a member of God's church, you have to be forgiven for sin. Yes. 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 People say, how y'all know ain't nobody sitting in that church? Because God don't have no sin in that church. Yes. Yes. There's a difference in coming around the church yes. and being in the church. People can sin all kinds of ways and come around the church, but the only way you're in the church is when you're delivered from all sin. Yes. As soon as you commit willful sin, you get kicked out of the church. Because he said that the soul that sinned, that name I'm blood out of my book. God said that. So he got the attendance book. How many people in the church of God? I don't know. Last person tried to number God's people, he got that was saying. He got the don't be trying to number God's people. How many y'all got God know? Why? Because anywhere around the globe, when a person repents of their sin, they become a part of the church of God. Over in Japan, over in Egypt, over in Israel, as soon as somebody says, God forgive me for all of my sin, they get born into the church. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go there. Uh, Psalms 87. Let's, let's bag that up with scripture. Colossians told us, if you kept reading, I just don't have the time. If you kept reading, Colossians would tell you that Christ is the head of the church. God's church don't have earthly headquarters. If your church has earthly headquarters, that's because that's where the head is on earth. God's church head is where he is. So if we can travel to your headquarters, that's not God's church. Psalm 87 and 5. And of Zion it shall be said. Of Zion of the church of God it shall be said. This and that man was born in her. How you get in the church? Because my cousin was a member. No, 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 no. When they come to God's church, ain't no letter of recommendation. You got to be born again. He told Nicodemus, you got to be born again. In order to get in the church of God, you got to be born again. You got to repent of your sins. You got to stop smoking, stop drinking, stop gambling, stop partying, stop cussing. Church joining, church going. And as soon as you repent of your sins, when your heart needs condition, God said, Man, man, God said, We got another baby. And the jungles of Africa and the Holy Ghost convict your soul. And you say, God, forgive me for my sin. He still got a church. He still saved me. The Bible says it's been fed to the mind, but the mind could be all the devils in hell could not defeat it. It's your soul saving station. The fountain of salvation. You want to be saved? You got to come to God's church. Listen, and God will meet you where you are. In your car, you at home, jam, you're having a jam session at home. Listen to your music, deep up. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost coming in. In the midst of your being rock and rocking out, the Holy Ghost will come. I'm not pleased with your life. Aren't you tired of the way you're living? Aren't you tired of this miracle ring? And all of a sudden, you at home, God, you're not know about the shirt. 
you at home by yourself. All of a sudden, you start feeling the, the power of God dealing with you. And all of a sudden, you start breaking down. And your heart meet the condition. You say, yeah, I'm just dying. I'm willing to give it up.
alone. Oh, come on. Wait, wait, wait. The unclean ain't going to pass so over. Hold on. Pedophiles don't pass over. Yeah. Yeah. Rapists don't pass over. Yeah. Lust demons don't pass over. Yeah. Gamblers, gossipers, backbiters, haters, yeah. that, they don't pass over. Yeah. But it shall be for them. It's God's church. Psalms 93 and 5. I'm almost done here. Ephesians 5. Psalms 93 and 5. I love one scripture because it says beautiful for situation. I don't care what your situation is. If you ain't got no money, the church is a beautiful place for you. If you're sick, it's beautiful for you. If you're grieving, if you're mourning, it's beautiful for you. If you're in a hard place, the church is a beautiful place for you. If you got a hard time right now and you just don't know what to do with yourself, it's beautiful for situation. It's the joy of the whole earth. It's Mount Zion. You know why? Because people can go to false religion all they want. When you need somebody to get a prayer through, uh, even some of our relatives who know about truth but refuse to come to truth, they go to false religion. They go to back. But let them get in a crisis. They know who to call. I don't like y'all. I think you don't take all that and all that. But let me get in a crisis. Excuse me. Uh, Request to the saints that are going to be praying. Why do you want your Babylonians to pray? Because you know that's not God's child. You know where the true people are. So when you get in a tight spot, you're going to go to the true folks. God still got a church. You may not like us, you may talk about us, but God still got a people. God still got a people. We don't hate you, we love you. The truth we preach will save your soul. But you gotta accept that. You gotta stop trying to fight it and accept it. You ain't gonna get this kind of truth nowhere else except God church. Don't tell me he's just like y'all. Ain't nobody just like him. You got one wife. Don't tell me she just like your wife. She ain't just like my wife. <laughs> That's the problem. We like too much knockoff stuff. If you can't afford the real thing, don't buy the knockoff. Pay the price to get the real thing. Just got this cheap stuff, cheap provision, cheap salvation. Won't you just be real? Pay the price. Get on your knees. Ask God to forgive you. And get a real member of God's real church. Too much phony stuff. Psalms 93 and 5. Thy testimonies are very sure. Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. Man, holiness is the way. God's church is holy. And when you and I cease being holy, we cease being members of God's church. Pastor, do something like to chase you around with no list and scratch your name off. The Holy Ghost scratch your name off. Y'all don't know what I'm doing in my private life. The Holy Ghost know. As soon as you and I come in, what you say, he goes. I'm a member of the church of God. You used to be a member of the church of God. Holiness becoming the house. God requires it. In order to be a member of God's church, you've got to be holy. And without God, you can't be holy. I told you I'm almost done. Ephesians 5 and 26. Ephesians 5, 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of the water by the word. Well, scripture says you come to the place where the spirits of just men are made perfect. They already saved. But only in God's church, saved folks get perfected. You know, you do laundry, and you put that up, stank it, smell it, all that, that laundry, you put it in the washing machine. But it got different cycles. Start off just pre washing. You know, people come out of sin, I don't drink no more. I don't smoke no more. You just in the pre wash section. <laughs> but you come to God's church. God said, let me tell you something. Pre wash. You ain't drinking and smoking no more. That's pre wash. we moving into the next section now. You go into the next section. You start washing real good. God start working. And they used to have an old fashioned washing machine. 
where your knuckles get cut up because it's scrub all the mess out of it, all the stench out of it. When you come to God's church, he uses the washing of the word to scrub you. You come to church and the Holy Ghost use the word, he scrub your attitude. The way you said that, the way you looked at her, the way you felt. But you ain't done yet. He working on you. Get the stains out. Then he rinsing off. The sin made us filthy. He rinsing you off. But you ain't done yet. Sometimes they got multiple rinses. You got to go through another rinse. You get cleansed again. The Holy Ghost comes in. And empowers you. But the washing's on the end of that point. They put you in the spin side. Yeah. <laughs> and he that was black. And he felt that was black. When God gets to put you through the spin. He shake the drawers off you. He shake the attitude off you. He shake the food in the off you. He shake the repair off you. Read that, 26 and 27. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. See, we use the word to wash around here. You can go to Doc's store and get that cheap detergent if you want to. You yeah, ain't gonna get your clothes clean. You gotta pay some money. Get the good stuff. The stuff that when you're done washing, you can smell it. When God done working on you and I, everybody know we got stay. They smell a sweet odor on you. A sweet smelling savior. They cut you off the track. And instead of speeding up with them, a sweet smell of safety. Person keeps you talk about you. Instead of you getting revenge, just a sweet smell of safety. Verse 27. So I may need to go back to Washington. All right. Isaiah 28 and 17. And we'll close. After that, Isaiah talks about Amen. go through, yes. go through, yes, gather out the stone. Yes. He said, and they're going to be called the redeemed, yes. the holy, yes. the sought out, yes. ex drug addicts, ex pimps, ex game bankers, ex, ex playboys, ex playgirls, ex church goers. Right. When God called you out, right. He put you in His church. Yes. And you say, man, I used to be. See, that's a testimony of people in God's church. We talk about what we used to be. We don't say, I was with my boyfriend last night. No, no, no. We say, when I was in sin. Me and my wife was fighting last night. We started slamming each other. But I was like, no, not in God's church. I slammed the door. She slammed the door. She stepped down there. I stepped up there. Not in God's church. Some of you may need to go back in the washing machine. Not in God's church. All right, let me close and get out of the way here. Come on. Jesus. Isaiah 28, 17, the other reader. Judgment uh, also. Judgment also. Will I lay to the line? See, it takes something to keep God's church clean. Yes. Yes. And false religion, you ain't going to hit no judgment. Not if they talk about it, they ain't going to do nothing about it. <laughs> They'll tell you, you can't be man that with folk you ain't married to. And Sister Cucumber up here with a big belly and ain't been married in her life. Our daughter, we all fall short because he's probably the father. <laughs> but in God's church, we don't just preach judgment, we execute. The Bible says, if any among you be called a brother and be a fornicator, know not to eat with such a one. There must be some judgment executed. 
cigarette in God's church. If we can, we see you with a cigarette in your mouth and you tell me that you're a vile member, I don't know, we're going to talk to you. What you doing smoking, brother? I got to get you five No, you ain't got no five We just, we said we can't help you get sick. Your name got blotted out. We got to help you get your name back in God's church. Judgment, come on, will I make to the line? And also will I reach to the line and righteousness to the plummet. And righteousness to the plummet. And my hell shall sweep away the righteousness. And it takes a certain kind of preaching. Yes. So I just, I love our ministry. Let me say this, Pastor, publicly. I love our, being a part of our ministry. And just as a member of this congregation, I love our ministry. Because it's made up, it's like Baskin Robbins. It's all kind of flavor. Yes. Some people are loud. Amen. Some people are soft. Some are boisterous, some are more melodious, right. some are teachers, some are just preachers. Oh, we got all kind of big shit. But it takes a certain type of preaching to keep our church clean. He can't just sing lullabies all the time. He loves us. He wants to help us. We can make every once in a while God say, no, give hell. H A I L. H A I L. Like hailstone. The preaching comes in such a way that you are sitting there and you're not measured up. That preaching comes and it cracks you upside the head. You live in sin and you hear the gospel in God's church. And if you want to get up and go for you, who told them about me? That water that we was watching with, we still using that same water. The water, the word of God, it, it starts going in crevices and cracks. You sitting on your pew like, well, nobody know me here. All of a sudden, the water. And all of a sudden, you're like, it's starting to feel uncomfortable. No, that's just the water. The word get all in the cracks. Secret places. Nobody know I smoked a little weed yesterday in the water yeah. And what does it do? And your covenant with death shall be this or no. It talks about how it sweeps away the refuge of lies. People go to these false churches and they get this false sense of security. We all fall short. So you sit there with your sins and you feel good because everybody in the congregation sinned just like me. So we can get up and sing and do everything because we all sinned. When you come to God's church, you surround with God holy folks. And the Holy Ghost, he get in there and he isolates you. You start sitting there and the Bible says, Holy is coming to thy house and you ain't holy. So you start feeling uncomfortable. You start saying, what is it about this place? Why did I come here? But the Holy Ghost uses the word and it sweeps away the refuge of life that you've been hiding in. In other words, he showed you you're not saved. I'm a quiet director, but the word exposes my own life. I've been in church all my life. Yeah, but you ain't been saved. All right. All right. I don't win. Let me close that again. First Peter 2. First Peter 2. Coming to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem. Actually, instead of there, Isaiah, Isaiah 4. We'll close there. First Peter 2 talks about your holy people, holy nation, a peculiar people. God's church is made up of peculiar folks. When we used to go to Dan Ryan Woods, you ain't got a man hard time finding the same. We stood out like sore thumbs. That's how holiness does. It's like a person who eats garlic. You can smell it before you can get up on it. Holiness is like that. You can be on the train. You know, and listen, we're not deceived to think that all the holy people right here in 46 and Drexel. God got folks all over the world. And sometimes you'll be in public and your spirit bear witness with that other person that they want to hear. Is that God? That holiness. You smell like a dog. You smell it. They spirit. They're spirits. And they're doing the same thing. Holding hands saying we 
out of the world because the requirement is we got to be holy. Yes. I go to church, you go to church. Let's just worship together. No, no, we can't worship together. Oh. Let's make sure we believe the same. Because if I eat the wrong thing, I get sick. I got this strict diet of holiness. I can't eat that water down with false religion stuff. I got to get the pure word. The kind that sweet way refuge a lot. The kind that don't let me have a nasty attitude with my spouse and never repent. The kind that don't let me hold grudges. The kind that don't let me cross waves when the saint walking that way. I go that way because we can get fault. I don't deal with it. Oh, no, 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 no. I got the real thing. And the real thing makes you act right. Isaiah 4, 1 through 6. Close with us. And in that day. God still got a church. In that day. Seven women shall take hold of one man. The gospel day. Seven women will take hold of one man. All these churches trying to take hold of Jesus. Saying, I'm your wife. No, I'm your wife. No, I'm your wife. No, I'm your wife. We please. Saying, we don't eat our own bread. We don't have our own teaching. I like to speak in tongues. I like to get baptized. I like to pass out watch no, I like to say a rose. Oh no, I bow down to Buddha. I like to bow down to Buddha. What you doing over here? No, I got my whole form of worship. I'm just spiritual. No, I go to the mosque because I'm the host. They are all got their own way of teaching. We don't eat our own bread. And wear our own apparel. And we don't have our own form of righteousness. We put it. Only let us be called by thy name. How can all these places be reading out the same book and have seven different lifestyles? If everybody was following the recipe of a holy Bible, you'd get holy people. If you follow the chocolate chip recipe, you don't get butter cookies. <laughs> How can you follow the recipe of the Holy Bible and get Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Pentecostal, Church of God with the wrong spirit? How you get that following the Holy Bible? Read, please. Only let us be called by thy name. Come on. To take away our reproach. Our reproach. Come on. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely. Now listen, yeah. Church of God. Uh, listen, of listen. Earth. Church of God here goes out in, in, in social media land, goes all over the world. Listen to this because he brings it home. Read, please. And it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. That he that is left in Zion. See, I told y'all God about to do a new thing. He put the church back in the washing machine. And I got news for you. When he done, everything that went in ain't going to come out. He said two-thirds going to cut off the back. He said he does that. During this revival season we in, I'm talking about the church. God doing something. And he said he that is left in Zion. Come on. And he that remained in Jerusalem. And he that when God is done doing what he's doing, they still there. Right. We better get real acquainted with the altar right through here. It needs to be our best friend. God, me and you. Lord, everything you've shown me in my life that needs to be worked on. God, I want to work on it like it's my last day here. Because as far as I know, it could be. I want to be left. In Zion, I want to remain in Jerusalem. We please shall be called holy. Those are the only ones who won't be called holy, the ones that are left. How are they going to be left? We please. Even everyone that is written among the living. Some people going to die because they're not willing to pay the price. Some people are not willing to do what it takes to stay saved, and they're not going to be left. Ain't no eternal security. They know once they've always saved. Oh, you can lose it. We know. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. See, see the church then got some filth on it. Amen. Amen. Being around the world, sometimes you brush up against stuff. And I said, oh, I got to get that off you. I got a clean church. How do you have an attitude all this time? What's wrong with you? Not in my church. He starts washing. When the Lord shall have removed the filth of the daughters of Zion. And shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem. He's from the got to get blood. rid of anything that will make you guilty. Anything that will make you blamable. Anything that will make you not pleasing in his sight. He got to get 
getting rid of all of that. And it takes a certain thing to do it. We play by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. The spirit of it. Judgment got a lot within the walls of God's church. Not just over the full pit, among us. Putting judgment on my own self. Putting judgment on you when you do something out of line around me. And then there's a preaching, the spirit of burning, something about those hell messages, those hell soul messages. It'll burn the dross away. And only the people that allow the word to burn that dross off of them, those are the only ones going to be left. Those are the only ones going to be holy. And when we get to that day, come on, Pastor, we get to that day when God said, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, there are going to be plenty of folks saying, oh, no, I was a member of the Church of God. I said, no, 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 you claim it. You claim to be a member of the Church of God. But I want to show you the filth in your life. My church don't have filth. No place for filth. Look at that. I told you about that attitude. I told you about your mouth. I told you about your church attendance. I, I talked to him about the stuff he was looking at. I didn't decide what I'm going to say with you. He didn't do nothing about it. You ain't part of my church. You ain't part from me. I never knew. God still has a church. We hope you have enjoyed gospel time today. If we can be of any help, please let us know by writing to the Church of God at 4601 South Drexel Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois, 60653, or phone 773-548-7133. If you would like to visit with us, our order of service is as follows. Sunday morning Bible school at 915 a.m. Sunday morning worship service at 11 o'clock a.m. Sunday night worship service at 5 p.m. Tuesday night worship service at 7 p.m. Prayer service on Thursday at 12 noon and Friday night Bible class at 7 p.m. Visit our website and like us on Facebook at churchofgodofchicago.com. Also join us live on Periscope at COGOC Gospel Time. As we bring this message to a close, we would like to leave these scriptures from the Word of God with you. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 22 and 23. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men, made perfect. The musician for today has been our piano, Sister Neron Horton. The readers for today have been Sister Katie Gordon and Sister Alice Allen. May God bless. Your announcement has been Sister Alice Allen. May God bless and keep you. God still has the church. You know, in spite of all that we're seeing out here today, God still has the church. It's no wonder that people are so confused as to what the real church is because they're seeing so, so much out here now. It, 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 it's a shame that what you're looking at today that's still being called a God's church. I don't, I don't even know how they can call themselves a church anymore. You're, you're not a church. Social club, maybe. Place of entertainment. But you're not a church, and, and definitely not God's church. As the brother said earlier uh, in the message, um, they're taking the, the definition of the church as being called out, out of the, the dictionary. Out of any definition because they don't want you to uh, be recognized as one that is separate from the world but you are part of the world you, you're intermingled with the world and God's church was never designed to be like that Amen. Amen. and if someone had mentioned it and it, it's true I I was on Facebook a few days ago and saw um, 
someone actually dancing in church. They were dancing. I mean, hip, hip, hip hop. But you know that's common? You know, we look at it and oh, how, how can that be? But it's common. It's common. I mean, the worldliness, the worldly music, the, 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 the dressing and the, the, the interaction with one another. Huh? And yet they still tell you you are going to make heaven if you act like that. But you know, there is a spirit within man God put that spirit in you. Yes. And he cries, I'm a father. Yes. My, my father, my father, your, your spirit cries that. Yes. And it doesn't matter what they do, whatever they try to convince you of, still your spirit says, that's not right. Yes. Now you can disregard it all you want, but your spirit and, 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 a, and that other that other good thing God put in you, which is your conscience. Oh, they're, they're working in tandem. That's not right. How could they? I can't make heaven. I can't. Now, you, you can go over and let them deceive you all you want. But God said, I made it sure that even, even those heathen that's out there in the jungle they're going to know what's right because I'm, I put a conscience in them. You can read that in Romans. What more with us? What more with us? So people, you know, they, 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 they want to shrug off God and I'm going down the bad road. I'm not... Once you hear this truth, Amen. you're held accountable. You, you're, you're held accountable. I often tell people, listen, you don't have to agree with us on, on, on everything. You know, some people are uh, pointing and picking out things. I don't agree with you all on that. I don't, I don't see that. I don't, okay, hey, hey, hey. But I tell them. That's not your problem. You want to go out there and bed hop. You want to go out there and do drugs and drink. And that's, that's what you want to do. That's what you know is wrong. That's what you want to do. And you're using all those other things as your scapegoat. And, you know, they, they try to uphold it first. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. You know, they try to uphold them. So they go down to Babylon and, you know, they are there. And then you find out. And all along, their conscience just talking to them. You know, you know this is wrong. You know you need to get your life right. You need to get it right. God still has a church. And God's church is his people that he says, I have a people that will not lie. And that's what people want to do. They want to be able to go out there and do those things that they know is wrong. To my left, to my right, there's a prayer room. But the Lord is talking to you. And even come, come to the front, come to the altar. The Lord is talking to you. It's time to get it right. It's time to get it right. You know, I, I, I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult. But we often say it feels like your feet are just cemented to the ground. 
and leave your shoes at the pews if you have to. Come out of those shoes. Make your way. Make your way. Make your way. God, I got. I, I got to. I got to come out of my norm. I got to do the usual. You know, there are some animals. If they're caught in a trap, they will chew their hand off because they 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 want to survive. Charles Wiley, 
think he's got uh, something. First, I would like to thank God for forgiveness. I would like to thank God for the faith. I would love to thank you all for praying for me, my, praying for my wife, my family. God has reclaimed me. I'm thankful. I want to live. I want to live. I want to live in the freedom of sin. Yes. With God's protection and the prayers, I know I can. I know I can. Thank you, son. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray for me. It's funny that even that my brothers and myself, we were talking about him recently. He was on our minds. So. Look what God does. We don't need to change this message. Don't need to change it. Don't need to rearrange it. Amen. Because it still saves. It still saves. Amen. Amen. All right. At this time, we'd love to acknowledge any guests that 